Just wanted to give an overview of the rig CNC open builds open source mill that I've been working on. So the general premise of this mill is to buy as much of the precision as possible. And what I mean by that is purchase components that are relatively inexpensive but have a high precision associated with them. Um, so for example, this is a granite surface plate. So I know that it is very rigid and very flat. Uh, and instead of carefully dialing in or machining a surface, I can I can just buy that and it's I know that it is rigid and flat. Uh, these linear guides, similarly, they are very straight and you know will convey motion rigidly uh, instead of dealing with you know V-wheels or anything that needs kind of external tooling. Um, and that that's been an overall philosophy of the mill is to just where you can purchase precision uh, and try to connect those precision bits with relatively simple parts. Um, so from the get-go, one of the ideas behind the mill was uh, to use uh, components that could be connected with either 3D printed parts or uh, parts that could be made simply on a drill press. So I wanted to make a mill that could be bootstrapped, meaning someone without specialty equipment, someone without you know, already having access to a mill or a CNC mill, uh, they could make this mill with relatively low investment. Um, so for this one, it's basically, if you have a 3D printer, and like the plates that connect this are literally 3D printed at the moment, uh, you can make this mill without really any extra tools. Um, but, you know, maybe besides screwdrivers and Allen keys and stuff like that. Um, but I'll start at the bottom and kind of work my way up to explain the design principles and philosophy and just how, how it came to look like this. Um, as I stated before, this is a granite plate, and that gives a huge base, adds a ton of weight, and just generally brings the rigidity of the system up uh, a decent amount. Another kind of key component is back here. This here is a steel vertical upright. Uh, so that is precision ground at 90 degrees, and it's typically used actually for robotics applications. So you'd mount kind of a robotic arm to this, and it, it gives you a good base uh, to work from. But the granite plate and this together are in the like $200 range total, so about $100 each. Um, and just bolting those two together, you know, there's no there's no interface between them, so I know that it's a fairly rigid coupling. So it's granite touching precision steel. And that gives me the base, uh, kind of like a VMC. And I'm not saying that this is anywhere near as rigid as that, but uh, I know that the vertical upright component of this is about as rigid, rigid as I can get it uh, for, you know, 200 bucks. So going from the granite, uh, kind of mechanically coupling the components rigidly is the name of the game to keep rigid, you know, to keep a rigid system. Um, so... I have a custom 3D printed plate, which uh, you know is, is not optimal, but I was just trying it for the desi design philosophy of uh, 3D printed components. I do plan on swapping that plate out with already made uh, aluminum plates, which are just swap in direct replacements of what is shown here. Um, the aluminum plates are actually already made on this mill. You can see I've been testing it, you know, test taking test cuts and just understanding what the mill is capable of. So, from the granite plate goes into this custom plate, which just fixtures it to these linear actuators. Um, the linear actuators I designed using Open Builds aluminum. The goal, uh, still, it, it, it's to buy components readily available that are fairly precise. So there's C beam in the middle. There's two 20 uh, by 20 just standard extrusions on the side, and those are held together with just 90 degree brackets. Um, on the top surface, there are linear slides. I think they're HGN high wind 12 size. Uh, two of those, and then there's a ball screw in the middle, which conveniently fits right in the C-beam channel. Uh, there's a 3D printing coupler, which just allows me to interface the stepper motor with the end of the ball screw. Um, and all of these components, so the linear guides and the ball screw, are all purchased at lengths that are appropriate. So like I, I didn't have to cut them or do anything crazy with a chop saw. And same thing with the aluminum. I, I can 
all of these parts are purchased and immediately bolted together, which dramatically simplifies the amount of uh, prerequisite tools that one needs to have. So each of these axes, the, you know, Y, X, and Z, are all identical, so I'm not really going to go over them each time, but you know, it's generally you make a module and you bolt the modules to stuff and hook up your stepper motor and it, it's ready to run. Um, so from the Y axis, we bolt the X axis to this subplate. This plate, again, is just 3D printed. Right now I use PETG, which just isn't really even the most rigid 3D printing plastic available. Um, but I, I have quick plans to swap it out for aluminum in the, in the near future. Um, right now I'm just testing the rigidity of the plastic configuration, just so people know. And I, I plan on upgrading this and comparing the two, kind of the, the general spring force that is, uh, you know, available between the two. So, like, if I take this one, I can... I don't know if you can even see that in the camera. It, it does move if it's plastic, and that, that's to be expected because there's two plastic parts kind of in the rigidity chain before you actually get to the part that you're milling. So that's that's kind of suboptimal. Uh, going back to kind of the Z column, so moving up from there, there's another identical linear actuator bolted to it, um, and that's it's, these all use the same coupling, same motors, same everything. Um, from that... This one I've actually already swapped out for aluminum. Um, just it was the first one I was working on, and, you know, I, <laughs> at the end of the day, I'm trying to make a mill I can use, but uh, I want to share it with people as I can. So I'm, I'm going to be documenting it as I remember to, but my, my main priority is to make a nice mill. Um, so this one has been swapped out for aluminum. Here is two iron castings. These were purchased at Little Machine Shop. Um, they are meant to actually be replacement parts for the Harbor Freight Sieg Mini Mill, uh, which is mighty convenient because they're rather inexpensive, and instead of buying a Sieg Mini Mill, I can just buy these castings for like 50 bucks or something like that. And they come with the spindle and the bearings and everything already installed. So I think that's a pretty good deal. And it, it's a nice you know, cast iron casting. It's very, very rigid. Uh, and it gives me R8 collet uh, tooling, which I like a lot. It gives me the opportunity to use a uh, Tormac tooling system in the future, or I could do an ATC, or it, it just generally gives me uh, a lot of options when it comes to tooling. So, moving up from there, uh, this is a brushless DC motor. It's about 1,000 watts, and I'm just using kind of a, a generic Chinese controller for it. Um, and then there's an adapter plate for this motor, and then a subplate to adapt kind of this whole custom assembly for this. If I had to do the whole project again, I would probably skip this motor. Um, Little Machine Shop, who I bought this from, it's a great company. They're, they're very responsive. Um, they sell an entire kit, which is this back plate, this spindle nose, uh, or this, this spindle assembly, and it has an AC motor attached, and it's like $200 more. I easily spent more than that just figuring out how to get this guy working. Uh, and it, it wasted a few months of my time just trying to get it working. I have it working now, it, it's okay, but if I had to do it again, I'd probably just skip that step. And I believe that's most of it. Um, I'm using, like I said, a, a generic Chinese uh, controller for the brushless DC. And then back here, I don't know if you can see it, it's the black box from Open Builds. So. They are a nice company to work with. Uh, they're also pretty responsive, and you know I, I try to support companies like that. So right now I'm using their interface device with that black box. I can uh, use one hand. I can jog this guy around. These are all ball screws, so backlash is you know very very little, no, nothing noticeable. Um, and right now I'm in the process of characterizing. How the mill performs. So right, the plan, and I'll, I'll have videos on this, is basically apply a known force to an end mill uh, at a, and measure the deflection to get a number for the uh, spring constant for the whole system. And I plan on, like I said, comparing the spring constant of the plastic version of the mill with the spring constant of the aluminum version of the mill uh, and comparing the two. So that's it for now, uh, and thanks for watching. Bye.